Greetings! Greetings to... We are Chappers and Lee. <clears throat> we certainly are. And we have a lovely new Telemacaster from Fender Guitars in Fenderland. Who make... Telecasters. Telecasters. This is a particularly enchanting one. Yeah, this is a new one. It's just come out sort of autumn 2011. Uh, it's very pretty. I've, uh, I'm rather enjoying this. Um, let me give you the quick rundown of the guitar. It's a solid ash body. Um, it's loaded with, uh, in fact, it's vintage styled, so we've got a, a vintage uh, C-shaped neck here. Yeah, F-type tuners at the yep. top with a little hole you can Lacquered, put a string into. That classic kind of very thin rosewood board that you get on vintage tellies, vintage guitars. A genuine Seymour Duncan 59 humbucker in the neck. Um, a very bright voiced, trebly sort of uh, vintage style single coil in the bridge here. Your three uh, vintage style yeah. saddles. I love the I love the fact that it's that colour as well, and the Beautiful scratch colour. plate really sort of sets it off nicely. Yeah, the sort of the fake tortoise shell kind of scratch plate looks very very cool. Got a little interesting feature in that typically speaking on a on a guitar you'd uh, use a 250k tone pots for a single coil, 500k tone pots for a for a humbucker. humbucker. This one here has a single tone control, and they've used a 375k pot. The idea. Uh, what we're trying to get here is should give a slightly darker tone to the humbucker, but a slightly brighter tone um, to the bridge pickup, the single coil. Pickup. This is a nice change, you know. Yeah, so it's it's, it's um, we give chappers the give chappers this weapon. It's a made in Mexico guitar, so it's uh, great value from <coughs> Fender. It's um, going to sell for about five fifty. It's a proper guitar, it's a good weight. It isn't super, super light, but it's not stupidly heavy. You know? yep. the, the neck, we don't often really talk about necks enough, but this is definitely kind of a regular C-type neck. It's not a V, it's not massively fat, it's not stupidly thin, mm. it's just kind of right in the middle. But all the timbers used on there look nice, don't they? The neck's yeah. a nice, nice uh, sort of tint. And yes, the... very nice fret. Did you oil this fretboard? Uh, I did, yes. Yeah, I thought you did. That's um, the kind of attention to detail that you do. I do. <laughs> I like my fretboards oiled. Yes. Mm. On the, on the single coil, but you can really hear the effects of that tone control on the yeah. on the humbucker. It was yeah, yeah. really a bassy, it's wasn't like an it? an evil, and dark emperor sat in his throne of doom. A, I always find it's a difficult balance, I think, there to sort of... Sometimes I think when you put a, two pickups on a guitar that are very different levels, it makes it quite hard to mm. use the two to get... You know, you, you can obviously get a great sound out of one and a great sound out of the other, but to flick between the two in a song mm. is often challenging because it's such a different... Well, I'm interested level, to know what happens if you put it in the middle. Okay. Which is what we're going to do right now. Uh, right, so <clears throat> we're going to dive over to a gain sound, but I'm going to purposely set this up uh, not too gainy, so it'll be um, like a crunchy, like a crunchy, rhythmy kind of sound, and then we'll see what it can do with a bit more gain in a minute.
banana claw. <laughs> Scourge of the um, seven retail stores. setting yeah with gain is really pleasant yeah, it sounds good very pleasant what we've demonstrated here folks is that a the telecaster is one of the most versatile guitars you can manufacture purchase uh, especially when you've got a humbucker and you've got a single coil and the fender make an amazing guitar they do for a great price as well but here's the interesting thing <clears throat> yeah what haven't we told them about <laughs> well we guitar? haven't told you that this is the graham coxon Signature model. Now, those of you who don't know who Graham Coxon is, he was and is the guitar player for Blur, and obviously Graham Coxon. Graham is a great guitar player. Some would say he's like an anti-hero yeah. guitarist. And what we were interested in, and the reason we kind of demoed this at the beginning without telling you it's a signature model, is we want to know, does that uh, affect your purchase decision? So do you now think <laughs> less of the guitar because of Graham Coxon's involvement and the fact that this is his signature model? I mean, it's very, it's only just signature on the back, that's it. Does it bother you? Leave a comment in the comment section or, below. Or, or does it make you want the guitar more? Or yeah. are you just indifferent? Because I mean, he's an influential guitar player. He's, he's well, influenced he a, loads of big bands. Yeah, he was part of a generation of guitar players that were almost anti-heroes. So, you know, you had guys like him, I suppose to an extent, you know, bands like Radiohead, where the guitar players were... Placebo, Brian Marker, great so, guitar player. You know? But it was very experiment. I don't think those guys would consider themselves guitar virtuosos. No. Um, and the, it was very experimental guitar sounds. So yeah. it's unusual. You don't often see uh, guitar makers going out on a limb and doing signature series for, for, for this type of guy. Yeah. Um, but I think it's cool. I was, you know, again, growing up in England and, you know, I was in my... What was I in my sort of early twenties when the sort of blur were around? They were massive, you know, the blur oasis thing in the UK. Yeah, it was, was a huge deal. It was a huge deal. We, you know. Like in the playgrounds, they used to go, "Who are you into?" Blur yeah. oasis. There was a fight if you were the wrong band, you know. And obviously, because I'm from the south, I was into blur and all the northern monkeys. What they were, in, were oasis, weren't they? Well, I hated them all because I'm a <laughs> metalhead. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're interested in your your opinions. We summoned the trolls, have a troll fest on our comment section. Nothing will be deleted unless it's to do yep. with you know. There is. Should, I should tell you one thing though. <clears throat> 
Uh, these guitars are only available uh, via European guitar stores. So if you're an American, if you're in America, the only or, way you can get hold of one is through Anderton's.co.uk. Yeah, so come to our site because we do ship uh, to America and Australia and all around the world. So uh, if you think this looks cool, um, all is not lost if you live outside the, of Europe. So we've that's saved it. you. So how much does this guitar cost, Lee? It's um, about five hundred and fifty pounds. Five hundred and fifty pounds. Seymour Duncan, uh, yeah. Ash. Yeah. Yes, Ash. Uh, tree wood, real tree wood, real yeah. tree wood from real trees. Yeah, and I think that Fender should be com com you know commended on using real legal trees in the manufacturing of their guitars. I've been Rob Say Chappers. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been the captain, and we'll see you next time. Bye.